Welcome to our online service for Christmas Eve 2021. My name is Reverend Brian McLeod. Welcome to our service for Knox and Ephraim Scott Churches in Bidette, Cape Breton. The magic of the night is the magic of promises fulfilled, the magic of light bursting on darkness, the magic of a baby's cry and mother's tender love, the magic of angels singing glorious to shepherds, the magic of God coming to earth to dwell among us, it's important to keep hold of this sense of magic as we tell the old familiar story from passages people know by heart. Something special, something incredible happens tonight. Rejoice, for our salvation has come. Amen. First of all, I want to welcome everybody gay again to our service tonight. We have uh, special readers tonight, and we actually have some special recorded music. And this music was recorded before uh, COVID happened. Um, one is back in 2018 and one's back in 2019. 2018 is the when the men's choir sang Oh Holy Night, and the other one is Michelle and Zion Stevens singing Mary Did You Know. And they'll be incorporated in our service tonight. And we have some guest readers tonight. And thank you again to all the readers. You did a great job. Our call to worship. Long we've walked in darkness. The light of the world is coming. We have lived in a land of deep darkness. The light of the world is coming. We have bore a heavy yoke of burden. The light of the world is coming. We have been beaten by the oppressor's rod. The Prince of Peace will save us. Let's bow our head for a prayer of admiration. The celebration of Christmas has just begun. Even though many of us have gone through the gift given and receiving, have feasted with family and friends, there's yet another gift which has been given. You, O loving God, has wrapped the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, around our lives. The light of your love through him is shining brightly. It's not a harsh light, but a multitude of bright colors that remind us of the wondrous ways you love us. Open our hearts and spirits as we hear the words of your holy scriptures and beautiful music. Bring us to you with such joy that it will be seen as through though our feet aren't even touching the ground. Amen. Our next thing is the lighting of the Christ candle, which you already see it's already lit, but we'll go through litany. God is coming in the world. Glory to God in the highest. This is good news for all people to us is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The world is transformed, and things cannot remain the same. It is made new in hope, peace, joy, and love. And let us pray. Source of light, shine our lives and your world with a transformed power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this, and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations will be blessed because you've obeyed me. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. You will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding with it with justice and righteousness from that time and on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 and 6 to 9. Shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will leave them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Luke and the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galil, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, are, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, Since I am a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Luke, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled from the angel of the Lord. Our fifth lesson for tonight is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Against a backdrop of emperors and taxes, Jesus is born. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Aquinas was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him. I was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Our sixth lesson is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to see the Savior of the world and find him laying in a manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby was lying in the manger. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east 
came to Jerusalem. And they asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it arose, and we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, following the star, where it stopped over the place where the child lay. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the stable, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And Sashko Ray Elm, the Heath Capital. Ounce and Hashach van Fachko, Agus van Fachko, Magari Gia, Agus Pe and Fachko Gia. Va a show as tools Magari Gia. Radio in the Hulut Nien, Lesh, Agus as Agnish, Catrenu Uni Radio. Ounce and Vapeha, Agus B a Veha, Sauls Gunia. Agus ha in solus a solus chuk ans an darachetus, agus ha de gach an darachetus be. Kurig dunya o hier den venem an. Hani gessen mit fiernish, hum ihrnish a horst mo in haus, agus hum gun kretjev ne hole triesen. Be ha ha besen in solus shin, ach kurig e. Kuntuku a fianish mo and hals. Beshaw and Solus feared her sarshaka, her older Ugunia, her chair hum and hugo. There a arms and hugo, Agus Rainu and Hugo Lesh, Ach Hatayanish a and Sule. Hanik a Yusi a Guha Hain. Agus Hatagav a Wunja Hain Rish. Ach, a veit as a Gav Rish, who gave Gai Kumuk of the Vian Clown to year. Ehen, Gaiusen, a Hakrachet, Senenem. A va Yenevin had. A va Yenevin. Ha an o ul no o halanyola no hal tunya acho gear. Agus reini gum fachko na eol agus gave kani na remiskne. Agus kani shinu gloid ma gloid un gin vich gin ahar wan crash agus fieri. Let's bow our head for prayer dedication and prayer thanks in Lord's prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your greatest gift. Your very word has come to earth to live with us through and through us. You filled us with your grace and truth. Your holy child sent to us free from our bonds. How can we repay such divine generosity? Receive our thanks and praise as you have given to us so we may now share your gifts and your grace with a world in need. 
May this offering help bring your light and love to those who still wander in the darkness. Tonight, Father, remember the baby living in a manger. We pray for peace. Peace in all the places where there is anger or, or war or fear. Peace in all the hearts that know sorrow or stress. We pray for people who will not sleep safely tonight because of the conflict in their lives. Cradle all these people and place in your love so that the world may sleep in heavenly peace this night. And tonight, remember the mother Mary rocking her baby. We pray for all the children born this Christmas season. Watch over our mothers and fathers and grandparents. Open for the best for their newborns. Help us create communities where every child is valued and every family has enough. May families rejoice because Christ the Savior is born for each of us and for all of us. Tonight we remember the Father Joseph protecting his little one. We pray for all those watching over the helpless and hopeless. Be with all those who must work tonight to keep the world safe and care for those in need. Be with those who are sick or sad or lonely so each one will know your comforting presence. God of starry heavens and the good old earth, eternal God, God with us, tonight as we remember the shepherds coming in haste and the wise men coming in wonder, open our hearts to reach out to the Christ child to receive the gift you offer us in him. Even as we offer our love to you in this name, bless us this year ahead so we can share your love and with all the lives that touch ours. And Heavenly Father, we pray tonight, especially for the EHS, our Volunteer Fire Department, the RCMP, Royal Canadian Forces. We pray for McLeod House, Alderwood, and our Seniors Complex. Father, today we pray for our hospital, its doctors, nurses, sports staff, and patients. And Father, we pray for all the people who are alone tonight. Be with them and walk with them on a journey. And Father, we especially pray tonight that people can hear your word. And now in our one voice we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us a day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, too, that on December 26th, there's no service for that day. So Sunday, December 26th, there's no service. And it's, uh, stay continued to see you for January 2nd.
name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There's once a story about a children's program at a public elementary school. Because they were cautious about being too religious, they had a nice little program scheduled, and the content centered around family, friends, and fun times during the holidays, all of which are good things, but none of which are the reason we have Christmas. The program was called Christmas Love. For the f grand finale, the Lion and kids were supposed to march across stage with pieces of poster board spelling out the words Christmas Love. Their backs were turned to the audience, and at an exact moment, they were supposed to turn around to spell the words with the letters on their poster board. Moms were backstage to make sure they marched out in the right order, but once they got on stage, they were on their own. And sure enough, one little girl holding them in Christmas got her sign turned upside down. So the moment came and the kids turned around, and what the audience saw was not Christmas love, but Christ was love. Without meaning to, the elementary students had told the truth of Christmas story after all. They had all set, they had set the stage for the real celebration of Christmas. You know, Christmas is a time that brings families together. Sure, there's at least someone in their lifetime wondered how he or she was going to be able to sleep on that fold-out couch that awaits them. That bar across the back starts to get uncomfortable sometime in the middle of the night. And someone else is wondering how they will fare out on the floor, whether they're in an air mattress or in a sleeping bag. That's what it's like when families get together. But you know, this year a lot of fam a lot of people are not able to celebrate Christmas the way they always did due to the pandemic. Many churches across North America and the world are not worshiping in person, not having Christmas pageants, not having the big family gatherings because of the pandemic. For example, here, this year, we're having our service online. I know there are people who don't get this day off, such as EHS, the firefighters, the RSMP, military personnel, and doctors, and nurses, and support staff. We thank them for their dedication. And today, we also thank all the frontline workers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, I keep hearing on TV and articles on the internet that we need to cancel the Christmas holiday. But you know, I disagree. You can't cancel Christmas. Christmas is about the birth of a special boy who would change the world forever. And the true meaning of Christmas is so important. Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth for all people, symbolized through the visits of the wise men and the shepherds. Mary and Joseph both had a strong faith in God, despite the difficulties they faced. Also, it is a time for people to help people. It's time for people to do good, a time to stop, reevaluate your life, what is working and what is not working. Christmas can be the most stressful time for many people. As people overspend, people will go without, and some people will see this as a complete money grab of the year. From November 11th on, it begins the commercial and secular Christmas. We've lost our way. You know, we've all read and heard these Bible stories about the shepherds before, taught by ministers and Sunday school teachers at Christmas time. We can even hear these verses on TV each year if we watch at Charlie Brown's Christmas. Charlie Brown spends the show, as many people do, looking in all the wrong places for the true meaning of Christmas. He thinks that maybe it's putting on a Christmas play or find just the right tree to decorate. But other kids all argue over the details of the play and call him stupid for the scrawny little tree he buys. In the end, his friend Linus tells Charlie Brown the true meaning of Christmas by reciting the Bible verses about the shepherds and, the, and about the birth of Jesus. You see, Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. It's about being with family. It's about hope, peace, love, and joy. It's the one time that almost everyone stops for a moment. You know, Christmas is about helping the less fortunate. It's about volunteering at the local food bank. It's about gathering gifts for the local lines Christmas wish. It's about buying apples and chocolates for food hampers for the food bank. It's about helping people who find this time of year stressful by sitting and listening to their story. It's about love your neighbors yourself. It's about picking up the phone and phoning someone who needs, who lives alone. 
It's about dropping a card off the mail for someone. It's about listening to someone who is alone, and it's about love. You know, Alan Jackson, his song, Let It Be Christmas, puts it very nicely. Let it be Christmas everywhere, in the hearts of all people, both near and far. Feel the love of season wherever you are, on the small country road lined with green mistletoe, big city streets where a thousand lights glow. Let the heavenly music all fill the air. Let every heart sing, let every bell ring. The story of hope and joy and peace. Let anger and fear and hate disappear. Let there be love that lasts through the year. One Christmas Eve at Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church in New York City, they were getting ready for their 11 p.m. service on Christmas Eve. As the people were gathering, a man named Jim came in, and Jim was a recovering alcoholic, sober just six months. But his disease had cost him his family, his job, just about everything. He went into the sanctuary for the first time, first Christmas Eve service, since his divorce. And who would sit in front of him but a happy, cheerful family of four? Dad, Mom, and two precious children anticipating the joy of Christmas morning. It was more than Jim could take. He got up and walked out of the church. And the minister, Thomas Tell, saw him in the foyer and said, Jim, where are you going? And Jim replied, I'm just going out for a scotch, Thomas said. Wait a minute, is your AA sponsor available? And Jim said, it's Christmas Eve, my sponsor's in Minnesota. There's nobody that can help me. I just came in for a word of hope and ended up sitting behind the family. If I had my life together, I'd be here with my wife and kids too. Pastor Twell said, wait right here. He didn't know exactly what he was going to do, but it was time to start the service. As he walked down to the front of the church, he prayed for a word of hope to give to Jim. He welcomed everyone, and then he said, I have an announcement. If anyone here tonight is a friend of Bill Wilson, and if you are, you know what I mean. Could you step out for a moment and meet with me in the back of the church? You see, Bill Wilson is the founder of the Alcoholics Anonymous. All over the century, men, women, college students got up and made their way back to the church. They understood the announcement. The minister went back and put Jim in the hands of people who cared. Then while he led a service proclaimed that God had became flesh in Jesus, the word was being made real in the back of his church. Jim was experiencing his word of hope. You know, when Isaiah wanted to speak to our deepest longings, the prophet chose light as a symbol because he knew how dark the world can be. And the tribes Isaiah addressed in chapter 9 were in a hopeless situation. They were the two northernmost tribes of Israel. And whenever anyone invaded, they were the first and last to bear the brunt of it. And when the Assyrians overrun Israel, they decided to annex these two tribes. These two tribes were cut off from the rest of Israel, separated from their countries and their families. What possible word of encouragement can be Isaiah offer? What can he say that will bring hope? Isaiah believed that the chaos of the world would be answered by the birth of a child. And he preaches, I know things are dismal. The enemy has killed people you love and taken your land. But listen to this. A child will be born. This child will make things right. You live in darkness, but take hope. For light is shining. Your despair will become joy. Your pressures will be driven away. Their bow gear destroyed. This one who comes will be a wonderful counselor, acting as a true friend, a mighty God, ruling power, everlasting Father caring for you, the Prince of Peace, bringing harmony to a war-torn world. His kingdom will last forever. Peace will come in the child that will be born. Andrew was watching his father, a vicar, write a sermon for Christmas Eve. How do you know what to say, Andrew asked. Why, God tells me, the father replied. Oh, then why do you keep crossing things out? You know, there's a store owner who was doing some last-minute shopping with his son when he saw another store owner with whom he had been friends for some time. The two of them exchanged greetings and spoke to each other about what a financially profitable season it had been for their respective stores. 
The small boy heard, overheard, overheard his father say, this has been the best Christmas ever. As the stone owners parted company, the father and son continued their shopping. But the father noticed his son had become very quiet. He inquired as to his son's silence, and his son replied, Dad, you just told Mr. Johnson that this was the best Christmas ever. His dad replied, It did, son. The economy is great and people are really spending. Okay, then the son replied, It's just that I always thought the first Christmas was the very first, was the best one. Live each day the fullest. Don't get upset about the small stuff. Don't be afraid to express your faith. Respect all people. Love your neighbor. Hug your family like it's the last hug you'll get from them. You see, today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to us. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appear, the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Merry Christmas, everyone. Please stay safe. Amen.
Well, it's finally Christmas Eve. The four event, weeks of Advent have brought us to this point. Young people are excited because tonight Santa will come and there will be presents to open on Christmas morning. Turkey will be dinner of choice in most households and Christmas carols will play soft in the background. On behalf of myself, Reverend Brian, the Church of Knox and Ephraim Scott, the Sessions and Church Council, my beautiful wife, and our four fur baby babies, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Please stay safe, and God bless you all. Soon we'll be back in person again. Take care.